For this client today, we're going to do a really short haircut. We're going to do a clipper cut or a fade on the side. We're going to take it up really high and we're going to shorten the top up using a scissor over comb technique. Uh, this client likes it a little spiky on top with a firm gel to hold it in place. Um, so I'm just going to spin him around uh, really slowly to show you what we're working with. Um, he doesn't have a difficult calic. A lot of people tend to have a difficult calic. As you can see in the back, his hair lays down easy. Um, one of the, the only really difficult part of the haircut, as you can see on the hairline, it goes from, it grows from right to left. So we just have to make sure that we taper that out. We taper that out properly. So when you're dealing with a right to left hairline, we're going to have to come against the grain when we're tapering that out. And then um, as we spin them around to this opposite side here, you can see where the hair is popping out a little bit on this side. But uh, that's okay because what we're going to do is we're going to cut it real close. So with these type of haircuts, what a lot of people struggle with is they try to leave it long enough so it lays down. So there's really no in-between length in the temple area when you're dealing with straight hair. You have to either take it in real close and take it up high or do a low taper so the hair lays down. So in this case, we're going to do the first. We're going to take it up real high and um, so it won't stick out until it's time for his next haircut. So the first thing we want to do is lightly dampen the hair. We don't want it too wet. If it's too wet, the, hair's, uh, the water's going to be dripping all over the client and you're not going to be able to read the hair correctly and see what the hair's doing. You want to move the comb really slow because if you take this way, we're taking a lot of sections. So the more sections you take, the less likely you are to have any scissor marks or clipper marks if you're using a clipper over comb technique. And very important, when you get to the front, you want to take the comb straight out on an even plane. You don't want to round down too much because the front should be the longest part of the haircut so there's enough hair to stand up when we comb it back. So now I have my center guide. I'm going to take a section on the right hand side. I'm using a seven and a half inch uh, barber shear. I like to use a larger shear because you can cover more ground and it's more accurate. So the less sections you have to take, the more accurate your work is going to be versus using a five or a five and a half inch scissor. Now I like to work, before I go in with my clipper work, I want to give myself a guide around here and what I call the round of the head section. So what I'm going to do is, you can see I have my top guide here, and I'm going to go in with my scissor over comb and remove this thickness here. And then when I go in with my clippers, it's going to go right through and we're not going to create any weight line. So if we don't create a weight line, we don't have to blend it out. So we're going to eliminate the blending step from the haircut. Again, a little hair on the face. You always want to be conscious of that and brushing that off. So the reason why I like to start on the right is because I like to work my way around from right to left. I can always see my previous guide in the comb. So everything I do throughout all my haircuts, I always, either if it's in my fingers or in the comb, I always want to be able to see my previous guide. That way you ensure the haircut's going to be even. Okay, and as I said, we're going to cut it pretty short so it doesn't stick out till it's time for its next haircut. So when you look at the client, when you look at the client straight on, you're going to have that aerodynamic look for this type of hairstyle. Are you a member of howtocuthair.tv? Learn the art of men's barbering from third generation master barber Greg Zorian in full HD 24/7 from anywhere in the world. Sign up for your free membership and learn how to increase your efficiency and make more money behind the chair. How to cut hair TV. Now what's going to happen is right here where we created our guide, we're not going to lose sight of our cutting blade and we're going to go right through and all of a sudden our guides meet. We take an imaginary line straight up in the air and there's nothing to blend or at worst case scenario, we have very little blending to do which we have a, a little trick where I'm going to show you for that to make it even easier as well. 
So if you look closely at my wrist, my wrist does not move at all through this whole motion. So when you're using your larger blades and you're using a fading motion, your elbow stays still, your wrist stays still, and the motion comes from your shoulder. And then with metal blades versus plastic attachments, as that hair is growing back, we have to go against the grain. But if you see where my finger is, I'm always protecting the ear. 100% of the time, if you touch the back of somebody's ear with a metal blade, it will cut their ear. So it's not like a plastic attachment. So you always want to make sure you're protecting the ear. Now, as we work from top to bottom, I always do the outline last. The outline or the taper at the bottom is always the last part. So if you look at the hairline right now, as I give you a better view here, so here you can start to see the taper shape play, take place. Here, it's very difficult to decide what to do or how to do it if you were to do the outline first. So once you go through and start working through your longer to shorter blades, your clippers are gonna do all the work and the hairline will just wind up taking shape. It's much easier to do it that way. So I'm doing two things at once. I'm working on the taper. And after I finish with this blade, I'm gonna move down to my adjustable clipper and we're gonna you know, finish, up, finish up the taper or the blend. But I wanna remove as much of the length as possible before I move on. And then we just finish up with the blend here. One stroke across or two. And that's all blended in. But still at some point, you, you want to quit while you're ahead. You don't, you don't want to mess around with it too much. Now when we're working with our fade on the bottom, we have the same thing going on. We have, it's thicker in the center, it's not that thick right here, and then it's thicker in this corner. So usually a lot of guys tend to have one spot on their hairline that's a little bit higher. So if it's, as long as it's not too high, we want to taper it up to that spot so it's even across and you don't see that after the haircut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten the blade out and I'm going to use a scooping motion, a very slow scooping motion. And when we're doing this step, you, you want to make sure your blade is completely parallel to the floor. So if your blade is parallel to the floor, it will keep you from rounding the corners. We don't want to round the corners because we want those corners uh, a nice square or diagonal and then we want the taper at the bottom. So we're going to go all the way across in the open position. Now this side's a little thicker, so when it's a little thicker, I'm going to tilt, tilt the blade up and I'm going to go a little faster with the scooping motion. And that tends to help you taper it out a little bit better because we don't want to chase this line up too high. I just want to lighten that up. So by going faster with the clipper, as I said before, if we go too fast up here, we miss some hair. But if we do it down here, that's the idea. If we, if we cut every other hair, it's going to leave it a nice tapered look. If, if we cut every hair, it's going to push it up too high. So now we're going to close it halfway in between. We're not going to go up as high. And we're going to do the same thing and we're going to come back across. And I'm going to over exaggerate it down and then we're going to shave to it. So now we have a nice outline, a nice tapered outline from longer to shorter all the way around. And then on the bottom, I don't want to get anywhere near my taper. I'm going to stop below there, about an inch below there, because if I put, cut a hole in my taper, I'm going to have to raise the whole hairline up, and we don't want it, we want it as low as possible. We don't want it up behind the ears. And then you want to pull the hair cloth down and make sure you, get, you, you cut the hair right to the t-shirt line. Introducing Zorian of New York, premium grooming products for the modern man designed by third-generation master barber, Greg Zorian. 
Made in the USA and not tested on animals, each of our styling products is infused with natural ingredients and features light, clean fragrances. Our two-in-one shampoo and conditioner is sulfate and paraben-free and color safe. Do you own a barbershop or salon, rent a chair, or run a school? Find out how we support our retailers with world-class barbering education and product knowledge training. We're currently accepting applications for wholesale accounts and invite you to apply on our website, Zorian of New York. For the styling portion of the haircut, we're going to use our Zorian of New York product line. Uh, we have two choices that we can use. This client likes um, a, a high shine and a strong hold, so we can either use a pomade or a firm hold gel. Um, this, this client happens to be a gel guy, so we're going to go with the gel, but I just wanted to, um, to tell you all for this particular style, you can use either one. Either one will work well and will give you, will give you a good hold. Um, the, the pomade is going to be a little harder to spread through the shorter hair, so we're going to go with the, uh, with the gel. But this particular gel, um, it has the aloe in it, which um, is very good for the hair and for the scalp. Uh, very moisturizing, and it's a much thicker gel as you can see, and it doesn't have any flakes. It's 100% flake free. So you can shake your head as much as you want and brush through it as much as you want during the day and you're not gonna get any flakes. So we're just going to get it through there good and rub it right down to the roots. And then I'm gonna use a vent brush to brush it all through. So for the for the, the these uh, spikier uh, haircuts, what we want to create is a little separation with the hair, so we don't want it to look so slick down. So that's why I like to use a vent brush with a larger uh, with a larger teeth. And then afterwards, what you can do too also is just take your fingers and uh, just just move the hair around a little bit too, so it's not so perfect. And then, you know, in the corners, when you have the gel still on your hands, we will just push it down in the corners. And then you'll always check in the mirror as I'm, as I'm styling it. And we'll get it in the sides and then push it down in the back a little bit. We don't want the back standing up. Then we'll uh, spin the client around so you can get a good view of the haircut and the, and the hairstyle. So again, just for a quick review, to get a, um, a wet look and a strong hold, I like to put the product in when the hair is dry. That way you're gonna get the strongest hold. Um, if you want a little bit lighter hold, you could put the, the, uh, the gel in when the hair is damp. Um, so that's, um, that's the, best way, the best way to style it. So again, for this client, I chose to put, that, put the gel in when the hair is dry so we get a nice strong hold.